Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Michael Wilkie with Data Torrent. I'm going to be your host today. Before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping items that I'd like to get out of the way. Today's presentation will run about an hour, including as much time as possible uh, for questions and answers at the end. Um, you probably already know, but you will be on mute, so please ask your questions via the questions box, and then we'll hold them to answer at the end. And if for any reason we are not able to answer a question, we will always respond to you after the webinar. And finally, um, the recording and the slides from today's presentations will be made available to you shortly after we wrap up. So let's get started. First, I'd like to introduce today's presenters in the order in which you'll hear them, starting with Nathan Trueblood, Vice President of Product Management with Data Torrent, and Kanad Dixit. Vice President Data Science with MindSticks Labs. They'll tell you a little bit more about themselves and the companies in a minute. So we know your time's valuable, so we wanna make this as informative as possible. We hope by the end of the webinar that you'll have learned about how product recommendations are changing the face of retail and e-commerce, about the data science behind product recommendation, what's required to apply that data science through production-ready product recommendation apps, and you'll see a demo. Moreover, you'll also learn about how DataTorrent is changing the way fast big data apps are operationalized. And by that, I mean our approach to the design, assembly, deployment, and management with a focus on time to value. In other words, how quickly we get them up so you start to see value and achieve your business outcomes. And you'll also hopefully learn about the broader services of MindSticks Labs as a complete solutions provider. So with that, I will turn it over to Nathan. Great, thanks, Michael. So first of all, just a little bit about uh, Data Torrent and about myself. So I run product management here. And uh, for those of you who are new to Data Torrent, uh, Data Torrent, uh, we're a real-time streaming analytics software company. And we work with some of the largest enterprises uh, in the world to provide competitive advantage with big data analytics. So that's what we do. Um, Kanad, maybe you can share a little bit about yourself and MindSticks. Sure, uh, hello, everybody. And thanks for joining uh, myself, Kanad Dixit, and uh, I'm heading the data science stream at uh, Vertical at MindSticks. So MindSticks is a digital uh, innovation partner to some of the largest retail powerhouses uh, globally spread across. Uh, we help them deliver higher revenue growth uh, using data science and machine learning solutions. Uh, and we are also expert in the upcoming field of conversational commerce, as you call it, with chatbots and voice-enabled device engagements. Uh, thanks, uh, Nathan, uh, we can move on. Yeah, so uh, just as we proceed, uh, MindSix is uh, a great provider of data science and uh, uh, ML solutions, but uh, for building this whole ecosystem, we need uh, data science, mobility, cloud, and UX, so we have all the ingredients that you need for a complete solution. Today we'll be focusing on the retail and the recommendation engine with uh, data science. Uh, so Nathan, please, uh, we can move forward. Great. Thanks, Kanad. So, you know, to summarize a little bit before we get into the details here, at Data Torrent, we're really experts in fast data analytics, and we know how to deliver enterprise-grade solutions using the latest innovation and in open source. Uh, but we can't be experts in every industry. So we partner with experts like MindSticks to deliver industry-specific real-time analytic solutions, uh, like the product recommendation uh, solution we're going to share with you today. And so if you recall, if you've been to some of our earlier webinars, you know, our approach is if you really want to do things right, you need a solid product uh, and you need an industry-specific expert to be successful. And so that's how we come together with MindSticks. So let's get into some of the details about product recommendations. So to begin with, you know, most of us know, most of you probably know, big data is really big business for retail. I would say that with the possible exception of financial services, there's really no other industry that has figured out more ways to take advantage of data and drive revenue using big data analytics. Uh, retail, and in particular e-commerce, as we all know, has made extensive use of data analytics. Over on the right, is just a sample of some of the use cases we see out in the market today. And of course, we're gonna talk about personalized recommendations in today's webinar. 
Um, but with the arrival of real-time in-memory streaming analytics, the kind of stuff that Data Torrent does, together with machine learning and data science, which is the kind of stuff that MindSticks does, we expect to see that list over on the right get a lot longer. So the point here is really that it won't be long before the majority of your shopping experiences and your commerce experiences, both online and in the store, uh, are going to be data-driven, personalized, and real-time. So it's already all around us and it's uh, happening fast. The other thing we see is that over the last few years, we're seeing that customer expectations have really shifted. Um, and a lot of this is a result of, of course, the internet and e-commerce and so forth. Customers expect now that their retail experience will be data-driven. They expect that their retailers are going to use the data that they have on you to empower you and make your shopping more effective. So this uh, survey from Salesforce really kind of highlights that point, which is that uh, if you aren't using data to intelligently predict what your customer wants to do, you're going to lose to your competition. So it's not just uh, that it's big business, you know, it's also the fact that customers now expect this and they're gonna choose the brands and choose the businesses that use data to serve them better. Now, of course, it's not just about expectations. Uh, you know, they really, uh, recommendations really drive revenue. Um, in preparing for the webinar today, I was looking at some of the market data. In 2015, there's a company called Brilliance that conducted an extensive analysis based on about 1.5 billion shopping sessions over a period of three months. Um, they were collecting data from a variety of uh, e-commerce sites that were using um, quite a few different product recommendation types. And so I know it's a little hard to read the chart on the right, but the point is you can see all the different places where they were using different types of product recommendations. Um, and in every single case, product recommendations resulted in increased purchases. So this really highlights that the better you make your recommendations, uh, the more revenue you're going to drive for your business. So uh, everyone is in a bit of an arms race to figure out how to make better and better recommendations using the latest technology and data science. So now Kanad's gonna take it, tell us a little bit about uh, the data science part of this. Thanks, thanks Nathan for covering this. And uh, uh, as Nathan already mentioned, uh, the recommender engines are not one size fits all anymore. Uh, having a great recommendation experience is like having a Swiss watch with multiple moving parts uh, that make it work together. So uh, next please, Nathan. Uh, so uh, all of you might have seen Amazon's uh, site. And once you go at the la landing page, uh, you see that there are multiple recommenders that really come into picture where Amazon is trying to upsell, cross-sell multiple products to you. Really, uh, it is on the basis of your past history. It is on the basis of uh, what you may like, something on your wish list. Uh, and uh, Nathan, if you can uh, switch next, please. Uh, and when you click on a product, uh, things don't end there. Uh, when you click on a product, you get even more different kind of recommenders. So really there are, uh, you've already seen about 10 different kind of recommendation engines in the works. Um, and uh, next please. So if you think that uh, the story ends here, it really continues all the way to the complete shopping experience. And it is not only personalized recommendations, but it is a real time experience for your current and past browsing history and your needs. Next please. So uh, I'm quoting two very famous examples in the retail industry here, where uh, back in 2008, retailers used to stock beer and diapers together, basis, uh, analysis which was based on static data gathered from number of users that uh, users in, men in the age of 30 to 40 shopping on Fridays will buy beer if they buy diapers but now uh, the recommendation engines have evolved like so have humans have uh, what recommendation engines are now really very personalized very precise with uh, respect to timing and accurate to the extent that Target was able to pre predict the pregnancy of a teenage girl even before her father could realize about it. 
So next, please. So we might be wondering what what lies within uh, all these recommendation engines and what are the kinds that we have. So broadly speaking, the recommendation engines are either content based or collaborative. And uh, nowadays, what we have is mostly some kind of a hybrid recommendation engines in the play, which is either a hybrid collaborative or a hybrid content based. And in today's webinar, we'll be going deeper into these and we'll be seeing a demo of how these can be achieved and how they can be achieved in the real time uh, with a solution and a product backbone like uh, data product. Uh, go ahead, please. So uh, <clears throat> what lies within the content-based and collaborative filtering is in content-based, uh, you have a user who is recommended a product based on the product features. If a, a product, uh, if you are looking for a Heineken beer, you may be shown five other types of beers in your cart, uh, in your shopping experience. On the other hand, if you are having a collaborative based uh, filtering engine, collaborative filtering based recommendation engine, then it really understands what similar users have purchased in the past. And if you and the other users uh, are matching in their experience of uh, shopping for say uh, a mobile phone and a smartwatch together you will be shown recommendation of smartwatch if you're trying to go for a mobile phone uh, next please name and uh, as i uh, said before uh, recommenders are not one size fits all anymore uh, they have evolved and they have become much more complex and we at mind six understand uh, that and that's where we are working on machine learning based recommenders where we uh, where the users define the features of uh, the uh, different characteristics that we want to learn and train the model with uh, at the same time we have more uh, advanced deep learning based recommenders where uh, the underlying features are kind of auto detected using uh, a ne neural network with hidden layers or we even have graph-based recommenders which try to capture the user patterns and behavior in the form of a data structure which is a graph and which allows us to connect and get the different relationships that a customer product multiple customers have with each other uh, next please and while we are talking of uh, websites um, we really uh, see recommenders all over our uh, shopping experience if you walk into a high touch boutique uh, if you're a regular customer any salesperson seems to have known all your history all your likes what have you been trending on the social media so whether it is high-end furniture boutiques or whether it is high-end um, cosmetic stores the personalized recommendations at real time as soon as the customer walks in uh, is very critical. Uh, and Nathan, if you want to... Uh, yeah, and, and the other comment I was going to make here is even beyond retail, and I know that's the main focus today, uh, at Data Torrent, we work across quite a few industries and we see how product recommendations or product and service recommendations, the same technology is being applied in, in telecom and in healthcare and so forth. So, uh, you know, as Kanad is saying, it's beyond the website but it's even beyond the, you know, the brick and mortar store, we're seeing product and service recommendations, uh, you know, everywhere you're dealing with customers at scale. Sure, thank you, Nathan. Uh, so to give a flavor of some of the tools that are very popular in the current market, in line with uh, the kind of recommendations that I shared. So we have Spark ML, which is an immensely popular library for uh, machine learning based uh, uh, algorithms and tools. Uh, we do have recommendation uh, that can be built out of uh, Spark ML using collaborative filtering. Uh, we have TensorFlow, which is also another hugely popular library recently open sourced by Google. Uh, it does provide a neural network based uh, uh, neural network, uh, which we can train for multiple areas, including recommendation engines. And uh, a Neo4j, which is a graph based implementation for 
user behavior that can be captured. So today we'll be trying to cover some of these topics and demoing one of these implementations tightly integrated uh, with uh, the real-time data torrent pipeline. Next one. Right. So uh, to start with, uh, we can go for the collaborative filtering, which is offered by Spark ML. And as I mentioned, in collaborative filtering, we have multiple users who have different purchase patterns. And what we try to do here is, let's say if you have user A, B, C, D, E, and we want to recommend something for user E, which is the last line, and the question mark refers to whether I should recommend him a laptop or not. So the recommender tries to analyze whether other users who have similar purchase patterns will like a particular laptop or not. Uh, and uh, I think if you can uh, move the video. Um, if we see user C who has a similar pattern as user E is not liking the laptop, so it will not be recommended to the next user E. Uh, so next, please. Uh, Yeah, so uh, as uh, with all recommendation in all uh, algorithm, there are a few pros as well as there are a few improvement areas where uh, one of the collaborative filtering uh, for, uh, Im improvement area is if the purchase history is not available or if it is a new user, we face a cold start problem. But nonetheless, it is a great way to recommend on the basis of similar users. So if you see Amazon, uh, it does provide for one of the use case where uh, no matter whether I'm known to Amazon or not, uh, basis some, uh, uh, no matter uh, whether I have uh, purchasing something or not, uh, as soon as I log in, I'll be shown recommendations with respect to my similar users. Uh, next, please. Uh, the another tool that uh, we are, also working on and has been showing a lot of market interest is uses a tensor flow, uh, where uh, we not only have to define the features uh, manually, but uh, we also uh, bank on the neural network to understand the features of uh, the different user uh, product cart, as well as the different product types that the user is trying to purchase as well as uh, make predictions of the sort that what will be the potential user basket size if I am planning a big billion day sale. Um, in, in this case, I, I can be prepared with both my inventory as well as my uh, resources with, with respect to uh, the resources needed for the site to be up, the resources needed for recommendations to be delivered or even the goods to be delivered on time. At the same time, users can have a very enriching experience with respect to uh, their recommendations where the neural network learns over time and uh, tries to predict their behavior and uh, correlate it with the others and show relevant recommendations. Next, please. So of course, I mean, ne neither of the recommender is perfect and that's why we need multiple recommenders. So for the interest of audience, I have captured some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. Uh, uh, Nathan, if you can move on. Uh, and the next one is, again, a graph-based recommender, which allows you to get even more uh, varieties of recommenders, where let's say you are able to capture the whole user behavior into a schema, where uh, you are able to capture the user uh, shopping history, you are able to capture the user demographics, and depending on which kind of similarity you want, uh, we can apply uh, a, a similarity between the users, how it overlaps with similar users who are purchasing other products, and try to get customized recommendations which may be respect to location, which may be respect to products that the user has not purchased, but other users have purchased, and for these similar patterns, we can identify using a graph-based uh, recommendation. So uh, next, please. Uh, next. So uh, of course, the 
value add here overall i would say that um, the retailers have uh, at their choice uh, multiple different kind of patterns and users uh, data um, with them and uh, the uh, these uh, recommend these recommenders will be updated at real time with the user buying history and uh, the D dt pipeline will then be integrated with these real time recommenders feed the real time live data input and be able to uh, show users the great shopping experience they are looking for uh, next next sure so uh, we can move on to the next uh, two. Okay, so let's talk now. I mean, we've heard from Kanad about there is, you know, to summarize a little bit, uh, there's a lot of innovation taking place in data science. There's a lot of different techniques that people are using uh, to provide recommendations. So as you, I shared the market data earlier, uh, you know, you have to be doing product recommendations and everything that you invest into making those recommendations more real time, more personalized, that's going to translate into revenue. So now let's talk a little bit about what are the you know, requirements for success here from a technology and platform perspective. So here are some of the key requirements that we see for delivering product recommendations and product recommendation uh, applications in production. And if you look at these requirements, really the ones that are listed here hold true for any real-time analytic application. So not just product recommendations, but there's a lot of different things you might be doing with real-time analytics. Um, but for retail in particular, the data volumes are huge and those volumes can change rapidly during the holiday season, for example. And so regardless of volume, you still need to be able to provide instant personalized responses back to your customer. And of course, this is especially important along with providing a really good end user experience. That becomes important when you're delivering your results back to the customer. So the point here is, you know, you really need a platform that you can trust to run your business on. Yeah, and uh, currently we are working on a use case where uh, user needs real, real time recommendations on his choice. So where you can, we can make it a very, very simplistic experience that user either swipes left for uh, uh, products he doesn't like or swipes right for the products he likes. And uh, it you really have just a fraction of seconds before the next product should be recommended and it should be recommended right. That's right. And so for that, you really need a, you know, a platform you can rely on. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, data torrent um, and, you know, and how we address that. So, the customers we work with and enterprises in general face a rather dizzying amount of technology choices when tackling the challenge of analytics at scale. And so in developing our platform to meet those requirements, we've pretty thoughtfully selected and hardened uh, the best of today's open source innovation. So in our experience today, enterprises don't have 12 to 18 months to evaluate, design, and develop their big data analytics applications. It just takes too long, customers' expectations are short, and the market is moving fast. So our approach is to be highly prescriptive. We've taken the guesswork out of the process so our customers can focus on delivering the applications and getting to outcomes quickly. And so this is again where having a, the right choice of technology and the right expert uh, to assist you is really how you can get to a positive outcome quickly. Furthermore, having the best and most innovative technology is not enough. Uh, you have to be able to trust that your analytics platform is robust enough to run your business. So part of what we do at DataTorrent is we tightly bind the open source components that we bring into our product to deliver a system that's pre-tested, fault tolerant, and highly operable. And then when we go to develop applications with uh, partners like MindStick for, for our customers, um, we have the confidence that we have a system that our customers can trust to run their applications. You know, the, the, the flip side is sometimes customers will ask us, well, you know, you've, you've built a lot of open source into your platform. Can't I just do all of this myself with open source? And of course, the answer is yes, but it takes a really long time. The open source is necessary for innovation, but it's not sufficient to run your business, especially if you need to get to outcomes quickly. So 
you know, you need our epoxy framework to harness that innovation and get it into production. So earlier I mentioned that, you know, real-time, uh, well, in particular retail businesses are driving a lot of use cases using streaming analytics, using real-time analytics. They're trying to drive a lot of outcomes. So this picture just shows the flow from the left to the right, sort of from where we get the data um, to take that from insight to action and ultimately drive an outcome for the business. So I've highlighted in this picture, and it's somewhat stylized, of course, but I've highlighted in blue what it takes to deliver a product recommendation and ultimately a personalized offer over on the right. But really this pattern is the same for a variety of real-time applications that we see and for a variety of outcomes that you're trying to drive in your business. So from a relatively small number of real-time enterprise data services, you can drive a lot of different kinds of outcomes for your business. Um, and so, you know, this is partly what we were seeing earlier about there's a lot of uh, potential with our customers to drive better, better end user um, experiences with their customers using real-time analytics. So going a little bit deeper, and we'll have a demo pretty soon, uh, going a little bit deeper into this, you know, how does data torrent help here? So as we've heard from Kanad, you know, there's a lot of innovation taking place in machine learning and artificial intelligence and data science and neural networks all that stuff. It's actually really uh, exciting times from an innovation perspective. Um, but to harness all that innovation and make it useful, you need a platform that enables you to deliver on the value. So you should think of data torrent. What we do here is we help deliver on the value of all those algorithms and models and so forth that are being developed um, to get better insight out of the data. So in practice, what this means is that our product makes it easy for you to put any of these recommendation engines into production. Um, coming up, we're going to show a demo that's focused on uh, Spark ML, but chances are you're going to employ a variety of techniques and models and algorithms to drive additional revenue for your business. So regardless of the technique you use, you know, we can help you get that into production quickly by providing you with all the tooling you need so you can concentrate on your business and your customers. All right, so enough talk. Let's look at a specific example. Uh, well, I can't promise I won't stop talking, but uh, enough slides. I'm gonna, let's go through a demo and take a look at how this fits together. So what I'm gonna show uh, coming up, I wanna kind of orient you a little bit to uh, some of the things I'll show in the demo coming up. So this is kind of a stylized view of uh, what the demo is. So there's several key steps here. One is, um, you know, you have an e-commerce site or a mobile, app, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, could be monitors in the store, you know, point of sale. You have some place that you're getting data in real time. In the demo, uh, we use Kafka as the transport that delivers the real time uh, events to us. And those are typically, you know, all the things, for example, on e-commerce, all the things people are clicking on, all the shopping events and so forth. So the first step of any of this is to take uh, all those events in, um, process them, and then train a model. And so in the demo, we'll see um, we, uh, Kanad and his team used Spark ML to train a model. Um, and then the second step is to take that model and deliver it into a real-time analytics pipeline, in this case, uh, you know, into a product recommendation application, so that as a recommendation request comes in, you can use the model and make a decision about what to uh, provide back to the customer. So that's step three, after you scored an event, the recommendation comes out uh, and it goes back to the e-commerce site, the mobile app, whatever you're powering um, with that personalized recommendation. Um, and of course, step three, all of this stuff has to happen with incredibly low latency. And then the last part we'll see in the demo is, of course, visualizing and evaluating the effectiveness of, uh, of the um, application overall. So let's go to step one with a little bit. So, so Kanad uh, can share a bit about the model we used in the demo. Sure, Nathan. So uh, for the purpose of this demo, we have used Spark ML uh, library, as I'd mentioned, and we took a relatively large data set uh, of Amazon product reviews. Uh, of the total data set of 142 million, we uh, chose about uh, 2 million reviews for training our model. And uh, we uh, have, deployed this model uh, with the Spark MLLib recommender, which uses ALS uh, underneath. Uh, and uh, the 
the good part here was that we were able to develop this and deploy it as an operator uh, in a DT DAG. Some of the concepts that uh, I'm sure Nathan will be talking about elaborating more. And the recommendations were generated at the real time um, with a scalable platform. So Nathan, over to you. Yep, and so after the model is trained, uh, the next step is to deliver that Spark ML model um, into a data torrent application. In this case, the model is delivered and executed as uh, an Apache Apex uh, operator that runs natively on data torrents platform. So that means then that data torrent RTS, our product, handles all the scaling and fault tolerance required um, to you know, execute that model and deliver on its value, which is ultimately personalized recommendations. So often the challenge is going from what the data scientists produce to then delivering that into a system that is reliable and scales and fault tolerant. And so that's this step two is delivery of the model into a streaming analytic application. And then step three, as I mentioned, is that model is then uh, put into an analytic application. And I'll go through that in a few minutes in the demo. It's really the heart of the recommendation engine. It takes requests from your e-commerce site, your mobile app, and so forth to uh, then provide back personalized, relevant recommendations uh, with as you know, low of latency, in other words, as fast as possible. And then the last step of the demo is uh, really about measuring effectiveness. Um, one of my favorite quotes, I think it's attributed to a, a guy named Peter Drucker, is if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So you need to be able to measure the effectiveness of your recommendation pipeline, the models, the performance of the application, and so forth. Um, so you may think that what you've developed is you know, absolutely fantastic, but you really can't uh, understand that unless you've instrumented your application, instrumented your model, and you can understand uh, you know, its performance. So chances are you won't be using just one algorithm or technique. So in order to ensure that you're driving the right behavior and ultimately driving revenue, uh, you need to be able to measure and see what's going on. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, in the product. So I'm gonna switch over to my browser and we're gonna take a look uh, at the data torrent console. So what we're looking at now is uh, the user interface for the data torrent console. Um, really, it's the single pane of glass for managing all of your streaming analytic applications. Um, this console is our front end. Um, it makes it easy to assemble and launch and manage uh, multiple streaming analytic applications. Um, and in fact, if I you know, click over here on the monitor tab, we can see on our demo cluster some of the applications that are running there now. Um, the console is really part of the epoxy framework that I talked about earlier. It's that glue that tightly integrates the open source components to give you a platform you can trust to run your business. So the two main applications um, that we can see here that I'll talk about uh, is the product recommender. Um, that's one here, the retail recommendation demo. Um, and then the other one is this uh, recommendation engine online analytics service. That's the part that really helps us uh, analyze and understand the effectiveness of the recommendation engine uh, itself. So let's go take a look at uh, the recommendation engine for a moment. So what we're looking at here is, uh, if you recall from the steps, there were sort of two steps in there. One is a recommendation pipeline, and the other is uh, a pipeline that has to do with taking in all the events so we can understand the effectiveness of, our, of the recommendations we're making. So the first one is the recommendation pipeline, and let me briefly walk you through that. Um, so you can see how it works. So uh, in the recommendation pipeline, you can see how recommendations come in. That's right here. And this is all being delivered via Kafka. Now, of course, this is a demo. So we're, uh, we're not connected to a real e-commerce site. We're just generating events. But the <clears throat> recommendation requests come in. They're then fed into that Spark recommender. This is that Spark ML model that I was talking about. Now, this is a nice, simple graph. Uh, it's easy to, to understand here in this picture. What's actually happening behind the scenes is, depending on the incoming data volume, each of these steps can be scaled out 
um, and is run in a fault tolerant way on the Hadoop cluster that this console is connected to. So while we're looking at a pretty simple uh, graph that shows what's going on, what's happening behind the scenes is actually scaling to meet the data volume <clears throat> and uh, you know, the SLA for delivering rec uh, recommendations quickly back to your e-commerce site. So a request comes in, the Spark model decides what the right recommendation needs to be. Uh, that recommendation is enriched so that what is handed back ultimately um, you know, to, the, to your e-commerce site, your mobile and so forth, uh, has all the data needed to serve up a recommendation. So ultimately, after the recommender does its thing, it's then admitted back out at, to Kafka so that your e-commerce site can pick it up and show that user um, you know, the right recommended product uh, right away with low latency. The other piece that's here in this application is we're taking in all of the e-commerce events, not just recommendation requests. We're taking all of those things in uh, for two reasons. One is so that that data can be persisted for, for additional model training as we collect more data. But the other reason that, that we're taking this data in is so that we can hand it off to our uh, event processing analytics service, which is our online analytics service um, based on the open source project Druid. So this other pipeline here is really concerned with taking in all the data, uh, persisting it for training, but then also uh, making it available for analysis. So the uh, you know, and of course, uh, it's key that all of this is able to uh, to run at scale. And I'll point out a few other things before we look at some of the graphs here. So I mentioned this, what we're looking at is a live application. And part of what the data torrent console allows you to do is quickly develop these applications. But then this particular view we're looking at is everything that your development team, your DevOps team and so forth needs to be able to see to understand how well is this application working? So right now we can see things like, is it running? What's the latency and, and so forth. Um, but this is just a basic view towards uh, you know, what the application is doing. So the other key part that I talked about was the importance of being able to evaluate and uh, measure the effectiveness of your application. So for that, DataTorrent makes it really easy to embed and create uh, dashboards that help you understand how well these applications are working. If you remember that quote I made earlier about, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So directly from this application, there are several uh, built-in dashboards that you can use to understand how well is this application working? So uh, let's take a look at that. So the ability to measure, tune, and optimize your recommender is key to getting into production with uh, confidence. Um, and so there's two things I want to show here, actually. The first one I want to show um, is really uh, understanding both the, you know, the business insights. So how well is this application solving the business problem? And then we'll come back to the other dashboard that will help us, you'll be able to see how we help you to understand how well is this application performing from a technical perspective. So remember, one of the key requirements here is that recommendations need to be processed quickly uh, regardless of volume. And so you know, these two things in combination help us understand how well are the recommendations doing? Um, and you know, what's the, the health of the application? So let's take a look here at the business insights. So this dashboard, of course, it's fully customizable, but the point is our platform makes it really easy to instrument your application so that we can see things like, what are the number of recommendations being generated per second? As you can see, this is real-time data. These things are fluctuating up and down because we're monitoring this application live and in real time. And then down below, what we can see, uh, and this is where um, our new capability, in the, uh, which is our online analytics service, really helps you to see some critical insight from a business perspective. So for example, uh, if you recall that graph I shared earlier, across these different pro product categories, we might want to be able to see, you know, what is the rate of products in these categories that are being viewed versus the ones that are recommended versus the ones that are purchased. So this is really... Uh, important if you're going to measure and understand the trends over time you know within a particular category how well is our recommender working are people looking at products um, and are they ultimately making a purchase and so uh, this is such a critical step to getting to production to being able to understand how effective things are working 
these dashboards are easy to create. They don't require development when you use DataTorrent. You can add widgets and customize these however you like. Uh, I was looking at this before the demo this morning, and part of how I know that uh, this is all uh, generated data is you can see the most recommendations right now uh, based on our randomized data apparently have to do with pet supplies. But the, the basic idea hopefully is pretty straightforward, which is we make it easy to instrument from a business perspective. So you know, am I getting the outcome? Am I getting the revenue uplift I want? And you can drill down and look across you know, different regions, different cities, and so forth. So we make it really easy for you to instrument and to understand how well it's working. So the other dashboard I'll cover briefly is not only do you want to know how things are going from a business perspective, but it's really important that you know how well things are working from a technical perspective. And quite often, although I'm showing you dashboards, this step of instrumenting your application, of understanding its performance characteristics, uh, being able to see is it working the way you want, uh, this is a lot of hard work that is where our customers, uh, at least before they come to DataTorrent, spend a lot of time trying to get this insight before they go to production. So when you work with DataTorrent, we kind of take that off the table so that you can do the instrumentation, get all the monitoring, get all the insight you need, um, and quickly go from a new model and a new idea to you know, getting the outcome that you want for your business. And so what we see in this particular chart is things like, what's the latency of the recommendation engine? So if I loaded a new model, uh, maybe something went wrong in my new model, my new algorithm, whether it's Spark ML, which is what we're using here today, or some other technique, knowing how data volume is affecting the latency of that recommendation is really important. Um, and of course, overall, we want to know what is the latency end to end from when a recommendation request comes in and when that recommendation goes out. And then, of course, we might want to be able to see, you know, what's the load of the, you know, all the CPUs, the processors on our cluster to make sure we're not going to run out of resources. Um, and so this basic insight uh, is super important if you're going to be able to run in production with confidence. And of course, our customers uh, are running these pipelines 24-7, 365. So it's, it's really important to understand how well it's working. So that's sort of the basics of the demo that I wanted to show, which is you know, how we go from, uh, you know, we provide a, a platform that lets you assemble and see these applications. Um, this is an example of a you know, retail recommendation pipeline um, that was uh, assembled um, together in collaboration with MindSticks, um, in particular you know, here where we integrate the Spark ML-based recommender, and then ultimately how the, our product really helps you to instrument all of this so that you can get to production quickly. Okay, so I wanna to get to Q&A in just a minute. So let me summarize a few things uh, that we saw um, and then we can open this up for questions. So of course, hopefully you've understood, I and mean, we see this every day, personalized recommendations are the key to any digital commerce. It's all around us. Um, but with all the innovation taking place, in data science right now. Uh, everything you can do to apply those techniques, um, if you can get those techniques into production quickly, they're going to drive revenue for your business. So data torrent, uh, our product data torrent RTS, we have that runtime that you need and that environment you need for getting those applications deployed into production. And of course our partner MindSticks has the retail and data science um, and furthermore the data torrent expertise to help you. Uh, so they already know how to use and develop these applications on our platform. And in fact, um, this uh, example application that I shared today, um, you can learn more about it. It's, uh, it's up in DataTorrent's App Factory um, online on our website. You can also see it in our product. So, um, you know, so that's available for you to take a look at as well. So together, DataTorrent and MySticks, we can really help you get to the outcomes and delivering those real-time personalized experiences you're looking for for your customers. So with that, uh, I want to turn it over to looking at some of the Q&A here. Uh, so let me, uh, what we're going to do here for this part of it, um, as I said before, there have been questions coming in throughout. So uh, let me take a look here um, at some of the questions. So um, 
let's see here. Uh, the, I'm just look, taking a quick look at the questions. So the first one here is uh, one of our attendees is asking. Um, so I'm working on. Uh, let me move that. I can't see the question there. So the question is, I'm working on a project, but it's complex system, high concurrent, which is a kind of CNN, convolutional neural network, geolocated, but having users interact, it may alter the lo uh, logics and merit order for the next interaction. So which platform would you suggest? I was thinking of Spark for the high volume data and the microintelligences uh, geolocated to run, uh, to run a TensorFlow. Any suggestions on how to do it better, perhaps using only one platform? Um, so Kanad, do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah. there is a Go ahead. Uh, yes. So uh, the question is, can we can we move to one platform? And uh, really, I think uh, we should use uh, platforms which are best suited for a purpose. So uh, if we are using a CNN-based uh, neural network, uh, then TensorFlow indeed does provide uh, a very good neural network capability. And in fact, uh, uh, recently uh, TensorFlow has uh, announced support for distributed computing. And when it comes to high volume data ingestion at real time, I think that's where uh, Data Torrent RTS is uh, really you know, stands out uh, in, in terms of the ability to be able to ingest uh, data volumes. So, uh, and, the, and the good part is um, what we should look at is whatever tools or platforms we are using, are they able to uh, integrate well with each other and I think that's the capability that we get um, open uh, tensorflow being uh, available both uh, you can use it on your private cloud or you can use it in public cloud at the same time uh, you can with data torrent you can integrate it as uh, one of your operator for uh, recommendations so uh, Nathan if you want to add something okay. No, I think that's that's a, a perfect answer, Kanad. Kind of, thank you. Um, we're getting more questions coming in, so let me move to the next one. So the next one here really has to do with security. So the question is, what measures are you guys taking, if any, to implement sufficiently reliable cybersecurity, client protection measures, given that open source is such an integral part of our model, specifically when you know uh, when considering highly sensitive or private information. So. Um, this is a great question, and it highlights, frankly, part of the message I was sending around our epoxy framework, which is that open source is really a great place for innovation, um, but you need to harden it and you need to uh, be able to make it operable. So in the data torrent platform, first of all, we have security enabled, so Kerberos, um, role-based access control, and we support encryption of data in motion and at rest. So you can encrypt the events as they're coming through. Uh, you can also encrypt that data when it's stored. Um, so a lot of our customers are, of course, very large enterprises. Um, we work in more spheres than just in retail. Um, data Torrent, we work with a lot of customers in finance and banking uh, where uh, you know, security is a really important requirement. Um, so this is precisely why uh, you need to think hard about doing these things yourself just with open source um, because a lot of the sort of security, encryption, and those kinds of features tend to be left as an afterthought. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention here is, of course, uh, we have support for things like uh, integrating with compliance monitoring and log monitoring and so forth because those are often requirements for our uh, for us with our customers um, when it comes to dealing with sensitive information. So the next question here is, uh, is learning supervised or unsupervised? So the answer here is that, you know, really both are viable in this setup. Um, I don't know if Kanat, if you want to add anything more, you know, what we're showing here today is a really flexible platform that lets you implement these uh, techniques pretty rapidly. So, whether supervised or unsupervised, we should be able to support either approach. So uh, yes, Nathan, I'll just like to add that uh, in the model that we've demonstrated, uh, the learning is uh, supervised. Uh, but at the same time, if we go for an unsupervised uh, net uh, learning uh, based recommender, we are able to route the uh, data from the DAG into uh, the model as a feedback. And at the same time, when the model uh, relearns, we are able to reload the same, the updated model in the DAG as well. 
That's right. And so we can load new models, for example, uh, quickly without uh, having to interrupt the flow of data processing. And so then one of the questions here, which I think is pretty relevant uh, to the previous uh, question, which is, so what should be the selection criteria for model creation? And if that model changes in future, um, you know, uh, or, you know, how, how do the other ML frameworks, you know, um, sorry, the question's a little garbled. Um, yeah. But essentially, I think the question is, what's the, what's the criteria around model creation and, and what happens if the model changes in the future? Yeah. So, so go ahead, come on. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, Nathan, uh, uh, what I would like to just say to everybody is there is no one size fit all that is a point that we were trying to cover. Uh, really depends on what kind of use case you have, what kind of data you have. So, in the industry currently, we have uh, a lot of pre trained models as well. So, what we can do is, if possible, we can take a pre trained model, train the last layer of model, and use it for our use case. If not, uh, we if we have a large amount of data, we can go for a neural network based model uh, with TensorFlow. If we have limited data, we uh, or we have uh, data with features which can be easily identified, we can go for something like an ALS based recommender. Uh, and likewise, I mean, uh, you really need to decide on the basis of use case data, uh, uh, resource availability. Uh, and even time, how how quickly you want your uh, model working and deployed. That's right. That's right. So a uh, couple other questions. I'm um, keeping an eye on the clock. Uh, we've got about five more minutes. So we'll we'll keep going. Um, so one of the questions here is, what's the best way to validate recommendations and its continuous improvement? So uh, you know certainly. If you heard from what I was sharing on the dashboards and so forth, there's really two key steps here. You have to be able to easily instrument your model and your recommendation pipeline. So if it's hard to instrument, if it's hard to get the metrics, it's going to be hard to improve things. So that's part of where data torrent helps. The other part is that um, our platform allows you to track and store both real-time metrics, which is what we saw um, in the dashboards, um, but also we store historical metrics as well. Um, so this means you can compare what's going on right now to what was going on historically. Um, and with our integration with Druid, um, we, we have essentially a real-time and historic OLAP facility. So that's online analytical processing. So it really allows you to drill down into and understand you know, how well are these uh, models working, how well are the applications working. So um, to continuously improve your model and your application, you have to measure it. And you have to be able to visualize and see what's going on. I mean, that's uh, and that's why it, we've invested so much into those capabilities uh, in our product because that's what you need to have to be able to get to production. So the next question here is: uh, Are all the recommendations automated, or could there be opportunities for subject matter experts to make real-time recommendations based on insights that the software app may not have yet had the capacity to drive? So I guess there's two things here. You could easily extend the pipeline. Uh, for certain kinds of recommendations to feed those recommendations to a live person. Although, you know, you wouldn't want to do that when you're trying to serve a really low latency recommendation because, uh, frankly, humans don't operate as fast as machines, right? Um, but the other thing you can do with Data Torrent is you may want to automate what, the rec uh, what those humans are doing by giving them the ability to uh, essentially deliver rules for how you're going to make recommendations. So we have integration with a complex event processing engine called Drools. And so you could, in that case, use the humans to actually be writing rules or updating rules in, in near real time for those more personalized recommendations. So, so either one of them um, is, is possible. Yeah, so, and I have one more comment to make yeah. sure. Uh, that when we're talking of subject matter experts uh, to give real-time recommendations, that's perfectly possible. That's exactly what the last mile retail is about in high-touch stores, where we do have very, very uh, professional and very expert uh, people uh, who are able to guide uh, customers with their knowledge. But what really helps is if they have details of the customer available, if they have details of recommendations available, their experience will only add 
to the benefit which is given by the real time recommendation that they get on say a device which they have in hand yep so we're almost at the top of the hour so uh we're going to need to wrap up i want to cover one more quick question which is uh is retail the only vertical where we focus um and and hopefully if you understand you know retail is where we focus for today's webinar but uh really more broadly rec product recommendations apply to a variety of industries um and so we work actually in finance telco industrial iot manufacturing healthcare so anywhere that enterprises are dealing with uh, a large amount of data and trying to use that data in real time for their competitive advantage. So we focused on retail today, um, but the possibilities for real-time analytics and data science are really exciting. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Nathan. Thank you, Kanad. Uh, just a quick closing comments. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's webinar. We've got some information up on the slide there on how to contact us, and we're happy to take any next steps that you'd like, whether it's answering some more questions. There was a couple of questions that we didn't get to. We'll, we'll follow up with that. Um, if you'd like another demo, if you'd like a, an inter introductory call. Um, there's also some other reference links there that'll give you some more information. Watch for the short survey that we'll send out after this, which will uh, give you an opportunity to tell us what you liked, what you didn't like, and perhaps some suggestions for future webinars. And then lastly, this is a monthly webinar series that we put on. Our next webinar will be on March 22nd that we'll be uh, presenting and sponsored by 451 Research. So until then, thank you very much for attending and have a great day.